Hello, what's up, YouTube photographer? Ronnie Sweater 923. In this tutorial, you're going to be learning how you can easily edit your photos using frequency separation in Photoshop. And if at all you're a beginner out there and you want to learn and understand frequency separation from the very start to the very end and how to process and color grade your files within the shortest time possible, this is the video for you. So simply like this video and don't forget to subscribe if at all you haven't liked the video yet. So simply hit the like button on this video. So in order to open a raw file into Photoshop, we are simply going to come right to the image that we want. And if I told you want to download the image to follow along with this tutorial, check the links in the description for the link to the raw file. So right click on the image and come to open with and simply open with Photoshop. Or you can simply drag and drop the raw file in Photoshop after opening it. And it's going to open up the image in Photoshop. So I'm just going to come and hit open with Photoshop. And it's going to automatically open up my camera raw filter. So under this basically i'll just simply increase my brightness so under this what i'll do i'll simply come and correct the lighting and contrast issues regarding this image under the light option within camera row. so i'll just come and take the highlights down take the whites down and add some contrast to the image and after doing that i'll simply slightly warm up the image under a temperature option so i'll slightly warm it up up to around 5200 and i think that looks okay it looks great so after doing that i'll just come and touch the blacks a little bit negative nine and open up the shadows slightly to around three so after creating this i'll simply come and make sure this is set to 16 bits channel right there and simply make sure sharpen for screen and it is set to standard and hit ok then come and open the image in photoshop for us to do a skin retouching so this is the image in photoshop so what we want to do first of all is first of all cropping the image so i prefer to crop the image in a ratio of 4 to 5 so just get the crop tool and choose a ratio of 4 to 5 or 8 by 10 because when you post the photo on instagram you want it to occupy the whole screen and you don't want the image to be cropped so after cropping the image in that ratio we are simply going to go into frequency separation remember frequency separation divides the image into the high frequency layer and the low frequency layer so just come to the background layer and simply press ctrl j or you can use command j on the keyboard so just press it twice to create those two layers right there so double click on this layer and name it to low frequency and the upper layer is going to be the high frequency layer so just double click to rename to high frequency and after doing that just come and hide the high frequency layer and select the low frequency layer then we're going to come and we blur our the textures from the low frequency layer. remember this layer only contains the colors and that is what we want to remain with so just come right to filter and come to blur and come to gaussian blur right there so after coming to gaussian blur you're simply going to come and take the radius all the way down click on an area that has more textures on the skin and left click and start taking up the radius of the blur so you left click and drag or to move you left click hold down and move up to a point whereby the textures are just starting to disappear from your image so at around eight that is when i'm just starting to lose out on the textures on the image so depending on, on the image you're working on you have to stop at the point where by the textures are just starting to disappear so the higher the radius the more textures are going to remain good in the final image and the lower the radius the more plastic or the less textures that are going to be remaining good so you have to look for that nice and sweet spot so just come right here and simply click ok and you can see the image is going to be looking, looking a little bit blurry so just come and select the high frequency and now activate it then come right here to image and come down to apply image so when you come to apply image it's going to open up this window the source is the name of the image the layer make sure you select the low frequency layer the blend mode since this is a 16-bit image the blend mode for 16-bit image is going to be add the scale is to offset zero make sure opacity is 100 percent preserve transparency and mask cannot check make sure the invert option is turned on and you see the textures on this gray layer but if at all you have eight right here it means the settings are going to be using the invert option is not going to be turned on and the blend mode has to be subtract the scale has to be two offset 128 and you'll see 
the details on this gray layer. So mine is a 16-bit image, so I'll just come and put the 16-bit settings. Come to the blend mode and change it from normal and change it to linear light. So I'll put these two in a group after selecting them and dragging them in this group folder. So after doing that, I'll just come and open up my frequency separation group, hide the high frequency layer and select the low frequency layer. And after doing that, just come under the brushes, right click and get the Mr. Brush tool. And if at all the Mr. Brush tool is not showing under the brushes, you can find or locate it below here. So for the settings, you're going to be using a clean brush. Make sure the brush is clean. And make sure the option that says clean the brush after each and every stroke has been selected. With the weight of 9%, load 75, mix 90, flat 100%. Make sure sample all layers is not turned on. And with that done, we're just going to simply start mixing on the image. So if at all the brush is showing a plus icon, make sure you press the caps lock key on the keyboard. And to increase or decrease on the size of the Mr. Brush tool, you can use the open and close brackets on the keyboard. So how to mix, you simply don't zoom all the way in. You simply left click and hold down a given area and start blending the transitions between the skin color just like that. Left click and mix those colors just like that. Increase on the size and mix the highlights alone just like that. So we are basically trying to blend the transitions but you can see I'm, I'm using a small brush to blend the transitions between the colors of the model skin. So you can see I'm following the way light is falling or the way the skin tones are flowing on the model skin to keep and maintain the original skin details. So you can see like that, mix this highlight alone. And while these areas are mixing from a highlight to a shadow, use a smaller brush and mix on that area to blend and create a nice transition. So for a nose, I'll mix the shadows on this area alone just like that reduce on the size mix the highlights alone just like that and mix those mid-tones increase on the size and also mix just like that and continue mixing just like that and you can notice that as we're doing this the image tends to look a little bit more on the plastic end but the reason for it looking plastic is because we turned off the high frequency and as soon as we turn the textures on you can see before after the textures are still left intact within the, the image so just come and hide this and continue working on the image so I'll come and blend the hand just like that so it is just as easy as blending and knowing where to blend so it takes so much time patience and practice so I'll mix those areas just like that just like that I think we are done mixing or blending the transitions between the skin tones and we have created a nice and even skin tone transitions so after doing that just come and activate the texture layer you can see before after the textures are still left intact within the image but we have blended the transitions between the skin so the next thing of doing skin retouching is removing the pimples or blemishes. So just come and select the high frequency layer. Come and get the clone stamp tool and make sure the settings hardness is set to zero. Or percent flat 100%. The mode is set to normal. Align is selected and make sure sample is set to current layer. So zoom into the image by using Ctrl plus on the keyboard. Or you can use Command plus on the keyboard. So to remove a blemish you hold, you hold down the Option key on the keyboard. Or you can use the Alternate key on the keyboard for windows and when you hold down the option key on the keyboard near the blemish then left click while holding down the option key or the alternate key on the keyboard to copy clean skin near the blemish and release the option key on the keyboard and left click over the blemish to replace the blemish with clean skin so i'm just going to be doing that for removing the pimples or blemishes so always take your time while cleaning up or removing these skin imperfections from your images because blemish removal is going to contribute over 70 percent to your overall retouched image so just take your time as you are trying to clean up or remove the blemishes and skin imperfections so to reduce or increase on the size of the clone stamp tool you can use the bracket keys as i mentioned to you earlier on so 
I'm just going to do a quick job right here because I don't want the tutorial to be a long one. So I'll be doing this quick, quick and fast enough because I don't want the tutorial to exceed 13 or 15 minutes. So I think this is done well. Command minus to zoom out to look at this at the image at a distance and identify the blemishes I haven't removed yet. So we hadn't worked on those areas just like that. So right now we are done removing most of or majority of the imperfections on the model skin. And command minus. So right now we are, we are done doing the skin retouching. So this is a before basically. So I'm just going to close this before, after, before, after. So next thing basically is going to be working on the blending of the skin tone. So we are simply going to come to the adjustments here and come and get the gradient map tool and make sure we just come and select the gradient icon right there and hide the gradient layer. So we have selected the gradient icon, then left click on the color option. It is going to open up the gradient editor. Make sure the sample is set 5x5 five five average. And we're just going to sample colors from the skin. Left click on the dark pointer. Then left click on the color option. It is going to open up the color picker tool. Then click on the darkest point of the skin tone. So I'm just going to choose this as my darkest point of the skin tone. I think that will do for the darkest point of the skin tone and click OK. Then click on the brightest point or this right hand pointer. Left click on the color option and click on the brightest point of the skin. Hit OK. Then we are basically going to click in the middle, type the location to 50 and left click on the color option and choose what should be our mid tones. So I just choose a slightly warm color for my mid tone. So I just choose that color and hit OK. Just like that. Activate this layer and change the blend mode from normal and change it all the way down to color. And after doing that, we're just going to come and select this layer mask once again and press Ctrl I on the keyboard to invert the effect. Come and get the brush tool. Right click and get the normal brush tool. Make sure the hardness set to zero and mode is normal or pass in the flat 100% and make sure you have black and white on these two color swatches. You can reset by pressing D on the keyboard. Or you can click on these two tiny boxes so make sure white is the foreground color so with that done simply come and start painting on the model skin so you're basically painting using a white brush on the model's face just like that and so you are basically trying to create a uniform skin color or a uniform skin tone and you're trying to even out and create a matching skin color for our model so don't mind if at all you paint extras because you can always erase the effect by painting using a black brush so black is going to erase the mistakes that you may do as you're trying to paint so right now we are done painting so this is the before after before after the skin looks okay and if I told you made a mistake while painting you can always come and switch to black and it is going to erase the effect. So if I told you are not comfortable with the colors you can always come and double click right there and you can click on this stopper and change the color for example for the mid-tone or you can increase the saturation of the mid-tones just like that and hit OK. And when you do that just come back and select this mask and you can perfect the mask so we hadn't painted in those areas like I said paint using a white brush so paint just in those areas that you did not paint or that you felt you did not paint in the first place so right now I have done a quick job so always take your time as you're trying to do this so this is the image before, after, before, after. And if at all the effect is too much, always come and reduce on the opacity to the one of your liking. So it's before, after. So let's just come and come to selective color and select the blacks right here. And simply come and intensify the blacks of the image and just cool down the image slightly. So this is what we've been able to achieve. And this is the image basically before, after, before, after. 
for skin retouching color grading. So after doing that, simply come to File, Export in order to save the image so it doesn't change in color and come to Export as. So when you come to export as, simply choose the format as JPEG and the quality to the maximum. And make sure the sample is set by Cubic Sharper. And make sure these two options are checked. Convert sRGB and embed color profile and simply hit export. So this is how you can easily edit your images in Photoshop from the best start to the very end. And if at all you have enjoyed this, simply like this video. And don't forget to subscribe if at all you have been watching and you're not subscribed to this channel. Ronix from Ronix Photography. Thank you for watching. I'll see you need more videos on this channel. Don't forget to keep practicing and also keep creating.